Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to our Navigator Focus series. Um, we're really excited today to have you here. We're going to give a few minutes just for people to continue to log on. Please tell us who, if you're here and how long you've been a son and what site you're at. We'd love, we'd love to hear from our navigators. So please just let us know who's here. Type it in the chat. And again, we'll give a few more minutes. It's action packed today. We have some great speakers. I'm not going to speak too much because we have all of these wonderful people with us today to share. So I'm getting very excited. Um, thank, welcome, welcome everybody. All right, I'll wait one more minute. We'll start at 11.01. I see people are still logging on. This is a great turnout, you guys. You will not be disappointed with what you're going to learn today. Um, I learned a lot from, from, from all of this. So we're really excited. We have Charles here and some great slides he's going to talk about. So um, you're going to learn a lot today. Um, so just sit down and, and open your ears and your mind and um, just take a minute to decompress, take a breath. We're going to get started. So welcome to our California Native a connection program, Engaging Tribal Health, um, and we're happy to have you. We're so excited. This is our first training for Navigators of the Year, so welcome 2023, um, and if you haven't um, joined us before, you, you're going to be excited to, to hear from our speakers today. Um, we are California Bridge. My name is Sherry Cisneros. I'm the Navigator Program Director, and our goal is very simple at California Bridge, 24-7 access to high-quality treatment for substance use disorders in all California hospitals by 2025. I can honestly say we're constantly updating. Back in 2019, some of you may still be around from then, and we love you, that you're still with us. Um, we started with 50 hospitals. Um, this update is a little old as of 2022. That was last year, which is just last month. We had over 180. But the new news is we have over 250 hospitals participating um, in our pilot BNP program again. So welcome and congratulations. And we appreciate all of you here today. So if you're from one of our new sites to one of our existing sites, we are so happy to have you and we're well on our way to all California hospitals. So welcome. Um, we have nothing to disclose. We're California Bridge and we share our information through com Creative Commons. Um, and I always like to start our, our, you know me, I always like to start our um, presentation with what is the bridge model. It's always a quick review. I know you guys know this and can raise your hand and I'm just going to give you the answer here. W number one is low barrier treatment. That is our buprenorphine in the emergency room that our docs are giving. And um, without urine drug screens, making it this so simple. Patient says, I'm an opioid withdrawal. Great. Great to have you here. Let's give you the medicine so you can feel better. Um, and then where our wonderful navigators come in, that connection to care and community and to change the culture into a harm reduction approach. So that's our model. It's very simple. Um, and I always like to remind that these are our object objectives today. You're gonna learn this plus so much more. All right, um, today's agenda, racial equity, diversity, and inclusion. And I added for MAP treatment because you're going to hear from Charles and you're going to learn a lot because I know I did looking at these slides. Um, and then we're going to talk about our program, our, our California Native Connection Program. And then we have some wonderful navigators to share their experiences. And this is where you're going to learn, you guys, how to engage the community. Charles is going to get you started and our navigators are going to get you finished. All right. Let's get started. Okay. I have Charles here and I, you know, if you don't know Charles, Charles is our, our program manager for harm reduction and racial equity. And he does so much more. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He's everywhere. Um, and so Charles, welcome. And I'm, uh, I, I'm so, I am honored to have you here because I know you have another training today. So make it a Sunday, a navigator all day event, right? Yeah, I'm not. So I'm going to leave the floor to you. 
Awesome. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to be here. Uh, my name is Charles Hawthorne. I, H Charles Hawthorne. I use they, them pronouns, and I am the equity and harm reduction project manager here at California Bridge. Um, if you've seen me before, it has probably either been talking about naloxone or harm reduction. Um, some of you might know me more from the harm reduction side of things, um, but I also help lead a lot of our racial equity work here, too. Um, and I'm really excited to here to just kind of offer a little bit of framing about why are we talking about this? Why is it really important for us to talk about race and ethnicity when it comes to um, substance use? I can share the next slide. Thank you. So one thing we know is substance use disorder treatment is not provided equitably to people of color. And this history is really important for us to know because it impacts the way that we do our work. Um, what you know about things uh, based on your community, based on what people around you are, are doing, um, really impacts the type of care that people seek out, the type of care people look for. And what we know is that people of color are offered and, and are given um, medication for substance use treatment um, at rates much lower. Uh, could you hit the next slide? So this is a fun little graph that was created by, uh, by our comms team. And what we were able to do was we took all of our zip codes in California and we split them up based on the percentage of the people in that zip code that identified as white versus non-white. So what we saw was on one end of this graph, the zip codes in California that had um, that were mostly white, which means zero to 20 percent um, of, uh, of the population were people of color over had uh, over 50 buprenorphine prescriptions per thousand people. However, on the other side of this graph, where the population was 80 to 100 percent people of color, there was only 5.3 prescriptions per thousand people, which means there's almost a 10 times disparity in the amount of treatment and buprenorphine prescriptions being offered. Um, just based on the amount of people of color uh, in a zip code, which is a really big thing to know. Um, we have some other data that showed uh, that Black people were 77% less likely to be prescribed buprenorphine in inpatient um, than white people. Um, and this is, all these things just, the, what they tell us is like, th this care is not accessible, not being uh, given to people who, who uh, of color who use drugs at the rates as much as white uh, patients who use drugs. Uh, could you hit the next slide? Um, and what we also know is that drug use for people of color is much more likely to lead to incarceration. So when we think about these kind of compounding issues of being offered treatment less, of, have, of seeing people be on treatment less, of when you use drugs, being more likely to be incarcerated, being more likely to face the negative consequences associated with drug use, all of that comes together um, to really be a call to action for us. How are we showing up to ensure that people across California of all types are getting everything that they need in order to stay safe and are not being put more in harm's way just based on their ethnicity or race? Um, and there are some things that we can do to start breaking this down. And um, they're going to talk, and all of my wonderful co centers are going to talk about this a bit more throughout this. But part of it is talking about how do we tell the stories of patients of color? Um, when you're speaking to uh, providers in your hospital and trying to help them understand a little bit more about the range of experiences that people go through who use drugs, making sure that you're highlighting patients of color and highlighting the specific ways that stigma and racism um, can show up to make it harder for patients to access care or can influence their life in ways that makes their substance use um, different or makes it uh, harder for them to, to navigate treatment uh, or navigate hospital environments. Um, also advocating for hospital policies that advance equity. So being able to think about what are all these different ways that we can make people feel more safe or more comfortable in our hospital. We have some really great resources on that. Everything from how do you interact with police within your emergency department to how do you make sure that when people who use drugs are in your space, they're not being unfairly regulated or um, being disrespected and that there's policies that are protecting them. Um, and a big part of all of that is also learning more and learning more and examining our own biases and attitudes towards race. Um, because as we start to break those apart, that's when we really start to see all these opportunities to really improve um, care for our patients. 
And it's really important to be able to do this just because as navigators, y'all are kind of the front line. Like when there's a lot of people coming through, hospitals move so quickly, emergency departments move really quickly. And it can be super challenging to be able to make sure that everybody is getting what they need. And so the more that you're able to kind of break down and see your own spots that you're not seeing um, the ways harms are coming up um, and examining those biases, the better, the better prepared you'll be, you will be to be able to support all of your patients who are coming through the emergency department as well. All right. And, and then I think that's about it. Is there another slide? Yep. And then I'll turn it back over um, to talk a little bit more about the project that we're working on, the California uh, Native Health Connection. I really appreciate you coming today, Charles. You're always so informative. And anybody wanting to reach out to Charles, um, please do so because we ha he he is the expert on all um, on all things harm reduction as well as racial equity. And we really are excited to have you here. And again, please reach out to Charles if you need any type of guidance. Um, they can show you the way, right? <laughs> Definitely. So as we move on, thank you, Charles. We're gonna move next to our Bloomberg American uh, Health Initiative. And so without further ado, we are here um, to present the data for our California Native Connection Program. Um, for some of you that may have been here in May of 2022, 2022 we uh, had an RFA, we called out navigators in specific counties to apply for a grant um, through John Hopkins Bloomberg American Health Initiative grant. And we were awarded, and um, this was a great opportunity because we had a very simple goal. And the goal of the project was to identify um, counties with the highest uh, American Indian Alaska Native opioid overdose rates and to initiate collaboration with navigators and tribal clinics in their region. Um, so it was a very specific um, ter you know, area and, and region and, and county. Um, and we really deep dived and drilled down to specific counties. So um, it was a very detailed um, project. And one of the things, one of the reasons why we've done this and tried this collaboration is as Charles has already talked about um, the disparities and, and the um, decrease of MAT treatment services to people of color. If you look, the top rate is Native Americans. And so I think this chart just says it implicitly. Um, in 2020, the rate zoomed up to 27 percent per thousand resident, 100,000 residents. So they might not have the most. It doesn't mean the most um, people, but they have the highest rate. And um, so we wanted to make a difference because let's just start from the top, right? Let's see, where can we make a difference to this rate um, as compared to others? Um, even if, you know, it's a slow moving rate, it's okay. We just wanted to see what we could do um, and learn about this whole uh, population. So Bloomberg American Health, how did we hear about this? Where did we get this information and how, you know, how did this transact? And I'm not going to lie, I am not the knower of all. I reach out to my collaborators, my partners, my allies, um, and we did some great work together. And I um, want to specifically appreciate Sarah Wendells. Um, Sarah, if you can please talk about this program because you were the one that brought it to California Bridge. And we are so appreciative because what we found out was amazing. So again, here's Sarah Wendell. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, I mean, it is just such an honor and a blessing to be here with all of you today. Um, I'll have to say, you know, to continue that collaborative spirit, um, this is really a synthesis uh, from a number of different angles. Um, I am currently the National Program Director with California Bridge, um, but I'm also a student at Johns Hopkins uh, School of Public Health and a fellow with the Bloomberg American Health Initiative. And so it is through that uh, avenue that we were able to use these resources from the Bloomberg American Health Initiative, uh, this collaborating organization award to attempt at this, uh, what we might call first steps 
at um, building relationships. That's one of these key key pieces that you know to to, to add on to what Charles was mentioning. You know, just the it, the relationship building is just so profound in terms of the work that we're trying to do is is hard. It's it's it's. Uh, addressing uh, the the needs in in communities that have never trusted uh, the health uh, care um, uh, industry who who don't don't necessarily want to engage in some of these amazing tools that we have learned about, and so really that's the the, the fundamental piece of this work is just relationship building. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, offer some some gratitude specifically to Melissa Walls, who um, is our faculty advisor with the Bloomberg American Health Initiative. She also has been truly inspirational with her work from uh, the Center for Indigenous Studies at Johns Hopkins. Um, so I think that she's in the audience somewhere. So offering gratitude and thanks, um, and um, continued collaboration. We hope ongoing. Um, and of course, Holly Echohawk. So Holly, um, I know that you um, also have some, some words to share. Um, and so I just wanted to offer you that opportunity as well. Um, um, first, I also, if we can go to the next slide, um, just also make sure that we were rooted in some of this early work that California Bridge did, um, Arlene Brown um, was a fundamental component of this aha moment that I think all of us at California Bridge had where early in pre-pandemic, we were all together um, in, in the room. <laughs> um, and she brought out these beaded badge reels. And I looked at those and was like, what is that? We had made these badge reels to share with some of our providers and some of our substance use navigators. And what she did made it so that um, it, it just was like, wow you are allowing folks that are walking into the doors in your hospital in Inyo County um, and, and, no, and opening that conversation just from the get-go, just from looking at this badge. Um, and so that kind of started to get our, 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 our wheels spinning, our, our, our thinking going in terms of what else can we do along that same approach. Um, and so for the next slide, you'll see the picture of all of this group here um, at the, um, uh, community connections event that uh, Gloria Miele, who's also in the audience, um, put together with her, her UCLA team. Um, and um, this was our kickoff meeting. And it was such a wonderful moment, um, in, particularly in this era, to be all together to start these conversations, to learn so much from um, all of these wonderful leaders throughout the state of California. Um, and really use this as an opportunity to, again, build relationships and, and learn from one another. So I'll let Holly um, also introduce and, and speak a little bit about what um, our approach and, mm -hmm. and, and what Hoffman and her team has, has been able to, to bring. Thank you. Sure. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Holly Echohawk here. Um, <clears throat> you know, those buttons are beat it buttons are fabulous and it shows it shows you the power of silent messaging um and uh, i see all the ch uh, the chats in there how much people enjoy those buttons and we need to figure out how to get more of them um so this is a really important project and i'm anxious to hear from the navigator so i'm just going to say a couple of things um, one is just a reminder to you all that California, the state of California, has the largest number of tribes in the California population than any other state in the country. That's followed by Oklahoma. But California has more tribal people than any other state in the country. There are over 100 federally recognized tribes in California. There's a huge uh, urban Indian population in all the major cities. Uh, but sadly, uh, as Sherry was showing you, uh, Native people have the highest rate of fatal drug overdose, <clears throat> and that has grown from uh, exceeded other populations starting in 2018 and it continuing to go kind of off the chart. So we need to fix that. <clears throat> and we wanted to develop this project. Uh, it's been a great partnership. And on behalf of Kaufman and Associates, thank you to California Bridge for letting us come into your space. 
and letting us work together on um, helping the navigators become introduced to tribal populations in their region. So it's been a great partnership. We definitely want to see it continue. It's only, this is just a, a small but mighty project. And I, I couldn't be happier the way it's turned out. And the partnership between Kaufman and Associates and our technical assistance staff who are uh, served throughout the state of California, uh, partnering up with your um, substance use navigators, it's, it's incredibly awesome effort. And I'm anxious to hear from them. So I'm gonna stop there and say thank you all again for letting us into your space. You know, thank you. I so appreciate this. And and Holly and Sarah, you guys, we've been collaborating for uh, over a year and a half, almost two years now. And it was so great to actually get down to action. I mean, that actually doing this, because I think if there's one thing we all learned is building relationships and collaboration they the, what these navigators did in four months was amazing it, you know it, it it takes years and i think sarah holly and i can attest to that right it takes years so what they've managed to accomplish in in four months uh, with holly's help has been great and again thank you for recognizing um gloria mealy it's in the audience at ucla for our community connections education training that was the kickoff for this picture um that we were invited to uh, all day training and so we truly thank them as as well. So um, real briefly, uh, I'm going to let the navigators talk as well. Keep keep that going. Um, what was our selection? Just wanted to tell you again and remind you, you know, people might feel um, not included in this. And, and that was never our intent. We wanted to fix, uh, to be specific with the counties with the highest opioid overdose rates. Um, we posted applicant uh, requests for applicants, seven navigators were selected and all navigators selected were required to um, attend mandatory trainings and give deliverables. Um, so this is our project work plan. We worked from September 2022 through January. We just had our meeting last um, last week. All navigators attended four meetings with our partnership, Holly um, and Kaufman and Associates. Again, they had their deliverables, and we ended up um, with six counties and six sites um, represented. Our California Bridge navigators included Marin County, Jeffrey Cooper, um, Rafael DiCaprio at Humboldt, Christine, um, Christine Norwood at Lake, Joanna Partita at Imperial County, and Sean Wilson represented two counties, which were Santa Barbara and Ventura. So first off, we want to hear from Jeffrey. Jeffrey, are you here? Jeffrey? Okay, we don't have Jeffrey. Okay, well, we'll come back to Jeffrey. No problem. We're gonna go to, I know Raphael is because I just saw him. Raphael DiCaprio from Providence St. Joseph Eureka in Humboldt County. Raphael. Hello, uh, Rafael DiCaprio, pronouns he, they. Um, I am a son for Providence, uh, St. Joe's in Eureka, uh, California, little tiny um, Humboldt County. Uh, we have like 100,000 folks here. Um, the beautiful thing about our wonderful area is that it is where the redwoods meet the ocean and we have 11 uh, tribes in Humboldt County. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful to be here. So thank you so much, uh, Sherry, for allowing me this wonderful opportunity. Um, I didn't understand how important um, you know, this was until I started working at the hospital and I got to see exactly what our folks were going through. Um, so uh, yeah, um, my history with um, the population here in Humboldt County is I've been in the substance use disorder realm for about 10 years. Um, so something that, um, that I was able to use to my advantage is that I, I'm a familiar face and I've been working um, with a lot of tribal members. Um, so, you know, when they see me in the ED, um, you know, I've heard Raphael, oh, you know, a familiar face. So um, I've been able to use that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so my journey, um, 
I, uh, <clears throat> I uh, thanks to Holly, uh, was able to get some connect connections to some of our um, tribal clinics here. Um, and uh, historically, our hospital does not have a very good reputation, and we have new leadership who is being very transparent about that. Um, so they are very supportive um, in our efforts and other efforts to um, let our uh, neighboring tribes know that we are here, um, we hear you, we see you, and we absolutely will make sure that you receive treatment that everybody deserves. Um, I've gotten very creative with some uh, tribal members um, who have had really bad experiences in, in the ED. I've learned to, um, to really listen um, to them. And um, again, I really love those those pins. And I do um, have pins and badges and uh, that show allyship. And I just got approval for some artwork to hang in our ED from um, the North Coast um, Indian Council. Um, so I'm really excited about that. That's a, a big thing because to get anything um, approved to be posted in the ED is a huge thing. So I'm really grateful for this new leadership. Um, and something that I just learned is that, you know, I have to be very, very mindful of my language. Um, and I also learned the history of the tribes um, and colonization and um, historical trauma. We have an, a really good uh, native, native studies here at our university. So I reached out to um, my professor and I got some wonderful information that I share with a lot of our staff members, um, you know, who didn't have the opportunity to go through that. Um, and, uh, so we've come up with some, um, some, uh, uh, ways that we can make our tribal members feel a little bit more comfortable. I, um, I've met people in the parking lot, um, and I have, uh, sat with them through their entire experience. Um, I've learned that a lot of the tribal members, um, family is a very important thing. Um, I always invite the family members, um, you know, with the patient, um, especially during COVID, we, you know, our hospital had some strict, uh, you know, guidelines. We were able to accommodate our tribal members that that did not want to come in um, without their family members. Um, and I had to, um, you know, really advocate, you know, for these patients. Thankfully, my um, my core leader. Um, was on board and was able to advocate um, on a management level. So we were able to accommodate them and allow them to come in with their family. I also, um, you know, uh, reached out to some of my um, cohort members of our uh, graduating class who are, do have native aff affiliation and ask them, you know, um, some advice. Um, and so what they told me is, you know, always be respectful, um, especially with the elders. You know, I have some elders that I deal with um, that, you know, I, they have family members that come in and I refer to them as auntie or uncle. Um, and they have requested that I, I do that because I've known them for so long. And that's just a sign of respect. Um, and uh, I also am really involved in our LGBTQ2S community here. Um, we have a large, um, it's, it's a small community, but for our small community, it's pretty large, um, and a growing uh, two-spirit community. And what a two-spirit person is, is a very sacred person who um, in the native ceremonies um, does both male and female um, representation and um, you know, uh, a lot of them identify with uh, um, the LGBTQ2S community. Um, and I was able to get invited to um, uh, an event at um, one of the Two Feathers. Um, it's Two Feathers, it's a community, a family community resource center. And, um, you know, I, it was awesome. I was able to make connections. I met a lot of new people. And I just, I, I saw this opportunity to pass my card out and let people know that we're here, um, you know, and we did get some response, um, you know, from that event. So I'm really excited. I also was invited to a lot of uh, ceremonies. 
um, I went to a brush dance and it was, I was so honored and um, I met a lot of folks after that. And uh, I also went to uh, recently to uh, the sweat lodge at uh, United Indian Health Services. And um, it was such an honor to be invited um, you know, and I just, I followed my host's lead. Um, and uh, afterwards, you know, it was so awesome. I got, you know, people recognized me from the ED. Um, and they're still coming in recognizing me from that uh, sweat lodge experience. Um, you know, so for me, it's really important to just get involved with um, my community and um, become that familiar face. Um, during these presentations that I've been, I was also told to not show up empty handed. Um, and I'm really grateful that, uh, you know, um, I have great leadership, you know, and I count my blessings every day because not everybody in my hospital has that. Um, but my, my supervisor, you know, said, just go up to our gift shop, um, you know, make a gift basket. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, I'm able to do that. And I, it's fabulous. I like to get creative and, you know, <laughs> so that's really awesome that we get to do that. Um, and yeah, I think that, um, uh, you know, some things that I'm, I'm really running into some barriers are my time management. Um, you know, I want to dedicate so much time to this initiative because it's so important. And, and just talking with a lot of the tribal members, hearing their experiences, um, you know, we, we can build so much on this. So I'm working with my core leader on um, developing, you know, a day or a few days uh, out of the week to where I can just um, commit to this because I have, I have more presentations, you know, thanks to Holly. Um, I reached out to Holly because I was having a hard time getting a hold of some of the tribal members. And um, so thank you very much. We were able to make that connection. And I have three presentations scheduled uh, for the next three weeks. And I'm really excited about that. I get to go up to um, uh, Crescent City, Del Norte County, which is our neighboring county and uh, do a presentation up there. So um, yeah, time management is one of my, my barriers that I'm definitely working on. Um, and uh, continuing to working, continue to working with our community and just letting people know that I'm here. Um, I go to, I, I try to go to all the events that I get invited to. Um, and I think that's all I have. I, I oh, that, on for that, hours. <laughs> yeah, that is wonderful, Raphael. And I just want to um, go over, you know, you talked about the community not having trust. And I th think that's a lot of some of our navigators may run into that, into that barrier because, you know, people are non-trusting of healthcare that showed up during COVID. And so it's still lingering. And, uh, and Raphael was very transparent to, to list that as a barrier is just rebuilding trust with the community. So it just sounds like, you know, putting yourself out there. It has been worked wonders for your building your, your community. And I see some questions in the chat. We're going to wait till the end only because we have other speakers and I want to make sure that they have enough time. Um, and so hold on to your questions. We will have a time um, or put it in the chat and we will try to answer it um, in the chat. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Raphael. Okay, next up is Christine. Christine Norwood. Hi, everyone. Hi, Christine. Christine Norwood is from Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital. And we're welcome. Welcome. She's from Nevada County, and we welcome you, Christine. I just wanted to say that while Raphael was talking, all of a sudden I went, Oh my God, yeah, my county is about the same, like 98,000. And then it occurred to me, like I, even during this project, I wasn't addressing Western Nevada County. So I'm like, oh, that's for my future truckies over there. So I'll be looping them in and doing a whole other thing that I'm like, oh yeah, because we've got a hospital over there. We're, we're not very partnered, but um, we will be, yeah, after this. So um yeah, so my goal was to strengthen existing partnership. Um, we have Chapaday Indian Health here in Grass Valley, and we have a good working relationship. They have um, a robust 
um, MAP program, um, Wellbriety, Red Road to Recovery, they've, they've got a lot of support, but I really had, um, and then my other part of my goal was to expand uh, partnership in community as well. So um, the way that I did that, you know, we, um, I got to do another meeting with Chapade and Grass Valley and then let them know that I wanted to expand and reach out to some of the staff that I hadn't met that are working Matt in the Auburn office, which is in a neighboring county. We kept having uh, meetings. They were going to do a tour for me. It just kept not happening. Everybody would be out or COVID and different things, you know, people would get sick. But one of the, um, an RN there that does Matt, he and I ended up having just um an informal phone call together for like an hour um that was completely awesome um got a lot of information on that um yeah so that was one of the ways that i reached out for an action item i then reached out to um, a local bipoc and lgbtq um resource that i'm not connected with um color me human um also i'm already I, i've already made connection with sierra native alliance um, down in Auburn, they, they send their folks to Chapaday. But, um, and there was another um, Native Alliance or governing body in Auburn. I, I reached out, um, phone calls, um, emails, and I just, I just kind of kept going. Um, so that was kind of, you know, not hearing back sometimes from people was kind of a, a bummer, but I just kept, you know, I tried different wording or I'd, I'd leave like a different, you know, different voicemail, you know, just like a check in, you know, over the four months kind of thing. Um, so that was, you know, that was a little bit, that was hard, but you know, you don't know. So what came out of that, though, is that um, through that our local, the spokesperson for Nisanon tribe, they don't have tribal recognition there. They're um, working and have a lot of community partners to get that recognition back. Um, the, the tribal spokesperson, um, she is also the director for CHIRP in my area. So we finally connected like after the holidays and I got invited to actually present for Matt February 15th. Um, I get to present to that, to a board. I'm really excited and it's like, conversation presentation it's going to be zoom so i don't i'm going to have a zoom you know thing ready to go um i'm super beyond excited about that um i also had gotten invited in october to a powwow but um i didn't get to go because we were already on vacation i'd heard about it through sierra native alliance but then officially from chapaday's directors like well come on out and they do one yearly but literally we were driving home from you know out of the area so bummed about that. Um, what else happened? Ah, oh, didn't know Color Me Human, who I'd been like, okay, three phone calls, two emails. I did get on their mailing list. It turned out, um, and I found this out because Martin Luther King's birthday, I went to a local event at a local um, Unitarian Universalist church, and I saw that they were going to be there. They're, they're, I don't know what he is, a pastor. He's also on their board, but the director actually was one of the speakers. So I got to go introduce myself and it turned out she'd been on a medical leave. So when she sent out her happy new year, I'm back in the office. I had a face already. She kind of knew like I'd already gone and intro and I'm going to be doing an event in February with the hospital. We're going to, but it's the sun department putting that on like boots on the ground and seeing if she can speak. I don't know if um, Nisanon will get to come. Um, I mean, invite everybody's like invited, but all the agencies like out there, I also am trying to, um, we are like the whitest county in Nevada County. So um, this is partially just to get all these agencies, especially in treatment centers and folks to get together because they have folks, everybody's going to treatment. Everybody's, you know, going to medical, dental, mat, whatever. Um, so we're trying to, to just bring that on and make sure that everybody knows that the hospital is a friendly hub. Like we do have folks come in. I had a gentleman in yesterday. He's from a, um, a tribe out of state, but he gave me the skinny on that between Nisanon and Maidu and, you know, being stripped of, um, I think Maidu still has their federal recognition, but for this area, there's a little bit of a conflict that was helpful to me to know that so that I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. Um, and he let me know, I know that Sierra Native Alliance has a, um, a sweat lodge, but he let me know that there is a Maidu and I think um, a sweat lodge up 
up kind of the ridge it's pretty rural but that there's a man there that i should go talk to and he gave me his name because and he's my do that way i can make a connection um again with that so i'm super excited to do that um yeah what else was happening it was really cool um yeah some of the other barriers that are things that i had learned um from the nurse the the mat provider nurse at uh, Chapaday Indian Health, and then from this gentleman yesterday, you know, um, and other folks who've come through too, but really hit home yesterday. It, there's so much misinformation out there. And so a lot of folks are like, that is, that is another government program that's just going to take our info and we don't know what's going to happen. Also, that is still, if we're using Suboxone, we're still addicted. I mean, the gentleman yesterday was like, that's going to ruin your teeth. And so we were talking about, you know, like social media and, um, you know, meth is what's going to go after your teeth. Suboxone is not going to go. But to him, he was like, no, he goes, I will still be addicted. And he's like, what's the point? You know, because one, you get high, one, you don't. If I'm going to use something, using is using. And um, and I had heard that from the the nurse for um, the MAP program at Chapadi as well. So yeah, I mean, it has just been, it's such a good experience. I've been just so happy um, to be able to, to be part of it and just so much, so much learning, you know. Oh, and then um, I did go, I did reach out to my CEO of my hospital, who my old boss had said, don't do that, but I did. And um, after talking with Holly and, um, and it was, that was good because at least he's aware, like, hi, there's this little program at your hospital. Um, but I got a brand new mission director. And so unbeknownst to me, the joint commission for, um, you know, common spirit dignity health hospitals and maybe other hospitals too out there, I don't know, has put different things out. You're supposed to hit different marks. So, um, during our first meeting together, this mission director and I decided we both have a passion for like what could be happening with this hospital regarding like indigenous populations and treatment and just the whole vibe of like what's going on in this county. And so his project is to put, to do a whole um, um, artistic or just have art, have an installation, but a, a permanent installation so that um, the tribes in the area and others will feel comfortable and see representation. So it's not just the gold miners, the gold rush history on, and then the history, the white history of this hospital, um, which obviously doesn't, you know, um, have everybody included in that. So I was really excited. I have tons of support from him. And I was like, wow, what a gift. I mean, I was like, thank you, universe. You know, thank you for me. And thank you for the hospital. Thank you for people in general coming here. So um, yeah, it's just pretty, I think it's pretty exciting. And um, ah, I do, I do want to put one thing out there with the gentleman yesterday. It was really, he, you know, he had quite a story and he was actually, you know, on hold and um, just had a lot to tell me, but um, I didn't write down a lot while we were talking just because we ended up talking about so many different things, but I, I called him back um, to say after he discharged, you know, safety burned out. And um, I was like, hey, I, you know, you told me who your people were um, and I didn't write a lot down because I just wanted to be present during our conversation. And, um, you know, I feel like it's important when someone tells you who their people are that that is a really important you know, part of the whole relationship. And, and he told me his um, tribe again, and then he just goes, thank you. Like, thank you for that because it's respectful, you know? And um, yeah, so that was just, it was just really nice. And I think that we're, we have a good reputation-ish, you know, as far as people being able to come in um, that we're friendly. I, we do have a lot of trans folks come through as well. And our hospital is actually really pretty good um, but I want to make sure that, you know, um, our BIPOC community as well feels some representation here and that this is their place to come to. So anyways, that's, that's kind of what we had going on and 
Thank you so much, Christine. I really appreciate how just you branched off, you know, you're loyal to the, the program, but it just went in different ways and how you navigated that. So I really appreciate your lessons learned of just, you know, beliefs, you know, we have to honor their beliefs. So I very much thank you. Next up is Joanna Partita from El Centro, Imperial County. Joanna? Hi, good morning. Um, my pronouns are she, her. So with this project, my journey, my goal was um, to establish a connection with our local Quechuan tribe. Um, I wanted to be able to offer our resources and services to the tribal community. Um, the Fort Yuma Quechuan Reservation borders the state of California, Arizona, Baja California, Mexico. Um, the action, action items, um, was to invite any stakeholder from the Quechuan tribe to join our Hospitals Wellness Wednesday Community Resource Center event. So every Wednesday our hospital has an event where any organization in our community can sign up, um, bring in the information pamphlet services that they offer to this event center. And the community is welcome to come. And it's a great way for um, organizations to network amongst each other and provide services and it's a great way to get the direct contact and it just helps better linkage within um for our our patients the community it's just a great way that everyone is aware of what's going on and you'll when someone needs any type of service you're able to provide that to that patient um some of the barriers um that i encountered was um i reached out to the quachan tribe meaning phone calls, emails. I went through every department trying to see which stakeholder would be helpful with this project. I was not getting any responses. I was freaking out. So I did reach out to um, Holly and her team, Kaufman and Associates um, Incorporated team to see what am I, what can I do? I'm like freaking out. How am I gonna like get this project done? when I'm not getting any responses. And um, so with that um, said, I actually decided, you know what, I'm just gonna um, drive down to the health center, um, introduce myself. And I went to um, meet with the community resource um, representative director, Ms. Sosa. She was really sweet. Um, when I went, I went along with another coworker of mine. Um, I took a folder with all the services and programs our hospital offers, including our MAP program. I put the flyer in with my direct contact. I told her I wanted to invite her and her staff to our events, as well as I would love to be invited to their events. Um, she did mention that they um, were kind of on pause with um, events due to the COVID um, precautions and we're kind of moving past that. So hopefully we get to attend a uh, event soon. Um, we do have a pending meeting um, to, so I can introduce myself to her staff since her staff was not available that day I met with her and um, just kind of go over all the services that we have and just to let them know that they can reach out to me to make sure that um, the service is um, provided to whoever may need it. Um, I did, you know, I did say, I don't know if there has been in the past a bad encounter with our hospital since there was not a connection. They were not aware of all the services that we provide. And I just wanted to like let her know that we want to learn about their community, the tribe, and just to make our hospital a safe zone for them um, to feel comfortable and welcome. Um, my advice would be with this project, well, my advice is to Yes, I would say try making a phone call email and not wait so long. So if you don't get a response, you know what, just drive out there because I did wait a while before I even went out there. I was worried that they're, I'm going to show up and they're going to be like, um, who are you? Why are you even here without any, you know, like any um, advance notice? Um, so um, it would be that. And um, with the success of making that connection, um, the warm handoff from Holly and her her team was very helpful. They did provide me a lot of information about the tribal, um, the Quechuan tribe. So some of that information I received from Kali and her team, I was able to use that during our meeting. 
So that was really, really, really helpful. So thank you, Holly and Kaufman and Associates Incorporated. That really, really helped. And um, yeah, I mean, I loved um, this project. I want to continue and see what else we can do just to get the word out and make those partnerships, connections, because it is needed in order to be successful in any in anything for any project, hospital, anything. Like you need that connection. You need to feel you know, connected to the community, to organizations in order to be successful. And, you know, just make it a safe zone for everyone, you know, kind of diminish all the stigmatizing, uh, stigmatize um, things going out there and just make everyone comfortable, accept everyone for who they are, you know, don't judge. Um, you know, to be honest, a lot of people, like I didn't really know about tribal community Prior to this project, I knew very little and just what you hear, which obviously a lot of the stuff you hear is not true. You know, like they think at all, tribal community does not come out. They have everything in their reservation and, you know, so just kind of stuff like that. So we need to kind of get over that, you know, just make those connections, not be, not be afraid and what's the worst, you know, they close the door and, you know, you're just knock on another one or try another way. <laughs> so yeah, but thank you so much. I really enjoyed um, being part of this project. Well, thank you, Joanna. Thank you for sharing that. And like you said, this is all about, you know, the learning experience. It's not really the outcome. It, it was the, the journey. I, I love how you explained that. Thanks, Joanna. We have Sean Wilson with us now, and I have to really appreciate Sean because he's from Adventist Health Simi Valley, um, but one of our navigators uh, left um, left uh, uh, her site. So Sean graciously agreed to represent Santa Barbara and Ventura County. So I am forever grateful to you, Sean. Um, so tell us about your journeys because they're really close. San Santa Barbara and Ventura Co County are partner are on their borderline. So tell us about your journey. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Sean Wilson. I am the substance use navigator for Adventist Health Simi Valley. I've been doing this for about two years, almost two years exactly. Uh, when I got the opportunity to participate in this program, I was blessed and honored. It was truly amazing. Um, the goal for me, as well as pretty much everybody else, was to bring awareness of MAP programs to local tribal communities of initially Ventura County and then Santa Barbara County as well. Um, the action items locate and identify the tribes. That was extremely challenging in the beginning. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Simi Valley, we're about 160,000 people, predominantly middle-class white community. Um, it was overwhelming, honestly, in the beginning. I would uh, basically, I did a Google search <laughs> to try to find information. I would reach out to different organizations, get no response, just like you know the rest of the team pretty much in the beginning. Um, I reached out to the Shumash Historical Society, left a message, no callback. Um, I was even so desperate at one point, I reached out to the Alevis Adobe Society, um, just grasping at straws to try to get some information. Uh, nothing was working. And then all of a sudden, the gates opened. I got a hold of the Shumash Tribal Health Clinic in San Ynez. Their care director, actually answered the phone. I told them what you know we were doing. We set up a meeting. I drove up there, spent the day with him and his team. And it has just been nonstop ever since. Um, the level of engagement that he has shown and the gratitude that they are partnering up with us to be part of this program. The um, making that connection is has been a huge part. 
while I was doing my searches, I came across an organization called Owens Valley Career Development Center. Um, same thing. I made a couple of phone calls, left some messages, never heard back. So on my way back from my meeting with um, in San Inez, I just stopped in and said, this is who I am. This is what we're doing. Would you be interested in learning more? And I got some contact information, sent out emails, and I looped in Kaufman and Associates. They were gracious enough to help and participate in the calls. We had a final call yesterday or the day before. I was able to connect the Shumash Tribal Health Clinic with this Owens Valley organization. They are going to collaborate on a couple of things. Chris, the, the care coordinator from the Shumash Health Clinic, emailed me separate offline and expressed so much gratitude that they can be part of this now. <laughs> and uh, we're actually going to, I think next week, with all the flooding and the storms up in um, Santa Maria, a lot of the encampments in the riverbeds have been washed away. So people are left with nothing. We're gonna physically go up there and hope, you know, help them rebuild. We're gonna be handing out uh, Narcan. We're gonna be getting resources. Uh, we've got some doctors that are going with us to provide um, services to the populations. It's gonna be a huge event. Um, so I feel very lucky to be part of that. Um, lessons learned. <laughs> uh, tribal culture. One of our questions on our deliverables was, um, how much do you know about American Indian culture after this project? And I put little, little knowledge. And I was actually, that was kind of, I was questioned about it a little bit. And I, I explained, there's so much to learn that I would be egotistical to think I'd, I've even scratched the surface of what there is to know. And I, just out of respect, I, I answered that question kind of more conservatively. And, um, I look so forward to being able to learn as much as I can from my team, from the, the Native American culture that I'm working with. It's just, I can't express my level of gratitude for this. Um, my advice would be perseverance. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Just keep on pushing. Um, no matter, no matter what, that door will eventually open. Um, it may not open in our time or the way we want to open it, but it will open. And just having that level of openness and open mindedness is going to take you guys so far in your careers as navigators. Um, I think uh, that pretty much covered my. Oh, Sean, that's wonderful. I loved how you connected, you know, truly collaboration, connected a tribe with Owens Valley. I mean, you know, and everybody's journey. And, and I think Sean brings out every, every single one of these navigators is different. And I love the advice they gave to you. It's going to be your journey and perseverance and all of them. Um, I, I really really love. I know we're short on time. I appreciate every single one navigator that was on this 
this journey. I'm kind of sad that's ending, but it's not. We're going to keep in touch. Um, but any questions, anything that really sticks out, you guys, we're going to send their contact information because I think it's really important um, you, to connect. And, and if you have a question for, the, for one of our navigators presenting today, ask them because they've had successes and barriers. It was not all easy. So, um, you know, they can really guide you. And not only does this work with tribal clinics, it trusting relationships is with all, all vulnerable populations. So, you know, building that trust, that's something that they really did. Um, and I really appreciate you guys. Um, we're going to end this soon. Addiction is not a moral failing. It's a chronic disease that requires medical treatment. I always like to end with something. Here's our resources. Um, and you can QR this code for more resources. Our next in-person training will be February 27th in Oakland. Please sign up. Spots are going fast. So if you want to attend with and see us live, we will be in Oakland. Um, there are our um, social media if you want to join us. And my name is Sherry Cisneros. And I really appreciate everybody here. I hope the lessons learned has really um, helped you um, get ready to prepare for your journey, whatever that journey, whoever you want to meet and do community engagement. Um, but really, this has been such a a wonderful, wonderful experience. And it has been condensed to four months. And one thing we've learned, I want to end with that, is it takes more than four months to build trusting relationships, you guys. Um, takes more than a phone call. And I think this is um, a, a summary of what this struggle has been for us, but it does yield great, great um, positive outcomes. We put the evaluation in the link if you need a certificate of attendance or a uh, KDAP CEU, you can log on to that link and click the evaluation and you will get a certificate. Anything else, you guys? We appreciate um, your time and we hope this was helpful. Um, and again, thanks to our collaborative team. I cannot say more. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, everybody.